an overview of cellular respiration. The key concept here is the overall process of cellular respiration converts sugar created in photosynthesis, remember, into ATP, the energy of life, using oxygen. Cellular respiration makes ATP by breaking down the sugars, again created in photosynthesis. If cellular respiration is aerobic, or requires oxygen. Aerobic stages take place in the mitochondria, which is the power plant of the cell. In a cell, you've got many mitochondria because a lot of ATP is needed. And it's a, a special area of the cell, a lot of folds and tucked in places for special enzymes to facilitate this process of breaking glucose down into ATP, carbon dioxide, and water. Glycolysis must take place first. This is an anaerobic process which does not require oxygen takes place in the cytoplasm before the um, sugar actually enters the mitochondria. It splits glucose into two three carbon molecules and produces two ATP molecules during this process. So out in the cytoplasm a glucose to start start the process it's glycolysis and uh, two ADPs are converted into ATP and the 6-carbon glucose is broken down into two 3-carbon molecules. Cellular re uh, respiration is a mirror image of photosynthesis. The Krebs cycle transfers energy into an electron transport chain. It takes place in the mitochondrial matrix, those folds and tucks that we saw in the picture before. Breaks down the 3-carbon molecules from glycolysis and makes a small amount of ATP in this case. We're not done yet, but so we've got a couple from glycolysis and a little bit from the beginning. And releases a carbon di and releases carbon dioxide, the first byproduct of cellular respiration, waste product actually. Transfers energy carrying molecules. So there's many steps to this uh, Krupp cycle. See, so first of all, we've got the um, three carbon comes in, and uh, some carbon dioxide is given off, and ATP is created, and it converts into other molecules. <coughs> the presence of oxygen in the inner membranes are going to produce a lot more ATP and water. So, like photosynthesis with its light dependent and light independent process, the Krupp cycle has two parts too the um, uh, matrix inner enclosed by the inner membrane and then you've got your inner membrane where um, oxygen is added and water is created and the rest of the ATP occurs. Electron transport change produces a large amount of ATP. It takes place in the inner membrane and the energy transferred to the um, there's energy transferred to the electron transport chain and oxygen enters the process. ATP is produced and water is released as a byproduct. So in the first part, carbon dioxide is released as a byproduct. In the second part, water is released as a byproduct. So our two waste products of cellular respiration are carbon dioxide and water. And what we're going to produce is a lot of ATP. So over on the right there, what do you get? ATP, carbon dioxide, ATP, and water from sugar and oxygen. The overall equation is a glucose molecule plus an oxygen yields, I'm sorry, glucose molecule plus six oxygens yields six carbon dioxide, six waters, and of course, a lot of ATP. And these reactants in photosynthesis are the same as the products of cell respiration. So they're kind of a, a, a cycle themselves, as we'll see in the next unit. So the reactants are photosynthesis. You add carbon dioxide and water, and you get sugar and oxygen. And in photosynthesis, you start with sugar and oxygen, and you end up with carbon dioxide and water.